The other um player I wanted to talk about as well is um Zach Levine because mm. I when I saw um Dejounte Murray tweet out an eyeball emoji right after a picture of Zach Levine and a rumor that Zach Levine would be interested in going out to the Spurs, I was like, you know, that that is yeah. a really big possibility. I feel like he and Dejounte Murray were best um friends. I think at one stage. Um, again, they both grew up in Seattle, I believe. Do you, is there any way, do you think Zach Levine leaves the Chicago Bulls? Is he the big, big surprise in the off season? Because the Mavericks as well were interested in him today. Um, they would reportedly be interested in sending a bunch of players over on a sign and trade. Mm. I don't think it gets done because apparently Levine really wants to be the number one. And I think the Spurs would be perfect, man. I would really like him on the Spurs. What do you, what do you think gets done with Zach Levine? Oh, uh, look, if I had to guess, uh, I don't think it's a done deal, but I think uh, Levine stays in Chicago. I think, if anything, he's more trying to send a message to the front office that, you know, just because they put a decent team around him this year doesn't mean that he doesn't want more. Um, and that They need to keep being proactive and keep trying to get more players in to get them to a contending level. Mm. Um, but if he does leave, I guess I could see the Spurs as a landing spot because he'd still be the number one and obviously a great defensive team. And DeJounte Murray is insane. He absolutely torched us in one of our games this year. I think I said this on the last podcast. that stayed in my brain. He absolutely killed us. Um yeah, the Mavericks, obviously, it's only a matter of time before they get someone with Luca, and then at that point, I'd, that's scary. Um, but, yeah, if I had to guess, I reckon he stays in Chicago. Hmm. I mean, the rumour about Lonzo's knee isn't good. Apparently, he's had major knee issues. Hmm. Not a great sign. I mean, I thought Lonzo was such a good signature to the Bulls, and honestly, the injury issues that that man has had is just not great. There's only mm. a couple of things they really need to do, I think. They need to bring in some interior defense, like... Yeah. They probably oh, need to get taller. The interior is. defense is an issue. Bring in a backup interior big. Go heavily for a JaVale McGee, man. You've got to go mm. after him. Um, you just got to increase that bench. The bench is... It's not great. The bench is really, really bad. And when the players went down with injuries, you had guys like Javante Green out here playing 40 minutes per game. Because I just yeah. had no one else to play. Go get a bench. It shouldn't be exactly the hardest thing to do. And I guess they just kind of, kind of, you know, hope that they're healthy. And sign Levine to the max. Like you can't lose Levine. Mm. Or I don't think you'd be going back to square one. You'd probably get some players back, but it wouldn't look good for the team. I think to lose Zach Levine. Plus the Spurs are such an intriguing team. Like. They're also interested in DeAndre Ayton. They're a big team that's interested in him as well. And they have got a lot of salary cap. Like, their biggest paid player is probably DeJounte Murray from Remembrance, and he's on $20 million. Not even on the max. Mm. He's nowhere near on the max. They should have yeah. a lot of money, and they've got a lot of tradable players. Like, Dougie McDermott, bro. Oh, Kenny Day's Dougie favorite buckets. player. He, Bring him he back. Lo- loves a bit of Dougie McDermott. He has trade value. Those guys all have trade value. Mm. Yaka Pirtle, trade value, all those type of players. So they've got moves they can definitely make. But I could see him re-signing with the Bulls. So I think that should get done. But as I, I've said before, if I was to pick like a big name player, other than Kyrie, because everyone knows Kyrie, there's something going on there. Mm. I mean, something's going on. If I had to pick a big name player, I would say Zach Levine could definitely leave. Harden won't. I think. You and me can both agree the 76ers will give him a billion bucks. I, I wouldn't that give him a billion, but it probably kind of has to, considering yeah. that they gave up a fair bit. They, that's exactly right. That, that kind of leads me on, though. Kyrie Irving, what do you think is going on there? Oh, it was pretty, uh, pretty easy to see that coming. Obviously, sat out the whole year because of... Um, the shot or whatever it was that was going on there at the end, it just turned into an absolute bloody shit show. But um, <laughs> I d- yeah, I can understand Brooklyn's hesitance to sign him to a long-term deal. And I can understand his hesitance to sign a short-term deal considering his talent. So I think they'll eventually get that done because really 
if it was just Kyrie, Brooklyn could afford to lose him. But if they lose Kyrie, they also lose KD. And I don't think they're going to do that because KD is the Brooklyn Nets. They traded everything. They basically let KD build this team um, from the ground up. So I, I don't think they can afford to lose Kyrie just for the sake of him. You, you're not done. wrong. The I mean, that rumor that came out of something nowhere that LA and Brooklyn secretly had, the GMs had a meetup. And there okay. was a rumor. <laughs> Did you hear about that? No. LA, LA GM and Brooklyn GM reportedly met up to discuss Kyrie. Because Lakers really want him. That's There's no secret behind that. Um, but yeah, everyone was like, West, Westbrook for Kyrie Irving. No. No. Because a uh, 426-year-old Westbrook with a 33-year-old KD would work because it didn't work when they were 28. And Ben Simmons and Westbrook and cannot ben play Simmons. together. I, you know what? I hope that gets done just so I can see Westbrook and Ben Simmons share Pass an NBA call. Other. That just would be the funniest it. thing. <laughs> Mate, if anything gets done, it would be Kyrie Irving and a first-round pick, I think, for like Anthony Davis. That's. I don't think it'd be a straight swap. I don't know. You'd think something... Would be it, when AD is healthy. Trading AD. Yeah, and that's the thing. When AD is healthy, to me, he's more valuable than Kyrie. Kyrie mm. is. I don't want to say a great scorer. No, I that's don't want to say what I want to say. I mean, screw it. I'm probably never going to get hired by ESPN anyway. Kyrie <laughs> Evans is known to be a locker room cancer. Is what I'm trying to get at here, <laughs> and that devalues yeah. him so much. I mean. He's already up for trade right now. They're already looking at it. I just don't know if he gets back, man. I, what, what would... If you were Kyrie Irving and you were told that they're looking to trade you, they don't believe that the Earth, Earth is flat like you do. They don't believe in your anti-vax thing. What, yeah. what actually keeps Kyrie Irving at that net besides wanting to play for Brooklyn like he did and loving Brooklyn... If the LA team want you, the Lakers are out there looking for you, and they offer a much better deal than the Nets. That's where I can see this, like, mm. shifting in a way. Well, that's what I was saying before, was um, it's basically just hesitancy to commit on both sides. Mm. Um, I feel like that what the Nets are doing is playing a bit of hardball and um, trying to bring the price down or the amount of time just because they feel uneasy committing to him, which is obviously understandable. But I don't see a world where they don't cave in eventually, just obviously so they can keep KD, like I said before. But yeah. if it gets to the point where they go too hard in those negotiations and they piss him off and he just goes, you know, I'm screw this. That's it, I'm gone. I'm going um, to Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> that is a possibility. Come to uh come to OKC. We have uh uh we have SGA. You have a bunch of anti vaxxers in Oklahoma, are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fan favorite instantly. Fan favorite instantly. Um, and the S flat. Does it get any better? Does it get any better? Yep. Does he like his cousin? I don't know. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This really is the sus podcast. This is the sus podcast. And uh, what I've been saying too is there is like really no other player that would probably fit, I think, the way Kyrie plays than a Ben Simmons. I think that duo would be low-key, mm. so fun to watch. Like, Curry Irving, I don't know how much he wants to play, mate. Like, when he had Harden on the team, he didn't want to necessarily be that number one guy. I think Harden, it was a very easy communication between them both that Harden was going to be the playmaker. <clears throat> and then you had LeBron. He and LeBron, even though Irving wanted to be the, another, the number one guy, there was no, mm. I feel like, serious issue with him being the playmaker. I just feel like Ben Simmons and Kyrie would low-key be such a good thing and i really want to see it happen but both are mm. locker room cancers why is ben simmons not on an nba court why did he wait the whole year to get back surgery yeah uh look Kyrie's always been at his best when all he has to do is score when yeah. there's no other he doesn't have to play defense he doesn't have to pass even though he can theoretically do those things he's always been at his best when he's just been asked to score when he was playing with lebron at the end of the day, he was the scorer. LeBron was doing everything else. Um, in Boston, obviously, not a lot of other playmaking on that team. Yeah, he was kind of forced scorers, to be the playmaker. But he was forced to be the leader and the playmaker, and it just 
just didn't work. I feel like he cops a lot more flack than he should for the Boston situation. I don't think it was all on him, even though he was a large part of it. Um, and obviously he's been successful. Those, oh, it was like 16 games. But in those 16 games with Harden, KD and Kyrie, they looked unstoppable with Harden as the playmaker. Like nobody was beating them. No. Yeah, so I, I mean, they got to re- they got to bring him back, right? Fun. They it would be fun. They got to bring him back. I don't want to watch Westbrook and Ben Simmons play together. If Westbrook and Ben Simmons <laughs> win do. a championship, that's the day I quit YouTube. Like that's the day all my NBA <laughs> expertise or whatever you want to call it just gets thrown window. out the window. Yeah. That'd be the worst duo I think I would ever see in the NBA. They'd be Except fighting for over rebounds. Great Jordan. Oh, yeah, no, stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Dude. Oh, DeAndre Jordan is probably the worst What do you call that one, the uh, the cancer lineup? That, no. In... I, don't, I think DeAndre Jordan, how LA started him, then they finally oh, realized, hold on, ridiculous. he might be the worst player in the NBA, waived him or whatever, then Philadelphia signed him, and he ended up starting games on Philadelphia. Might have been oh. like the most insane thing I've ever seen. Like, how does that happen? He should be playing in Australia for the local <laughs> Mornington Peninsula team. He should not be... NBL ones. Not NBL even, ones. Not, not even, even the, the NBL. He should be playing... Blues. Whatever high school Julian Newman is playing for. That's, <laughs> that's who he should be playing for. Oh, my. Remember when no, Julian think... Newman's dad kept saying that Julian Newman was going to get signed to an NBL team? Julian he didn't Newman even get signed know. to an NBL 1 team. Uh, the last time I heard of Julian Newman was when Xavier wouldn't shut up about him for two <laughs> weeks in, like, mid-2020. <laughs> and before that, I haven't heard of him since 2016. What? I... <laughs> Where's Michael Zamba, bro? He needs to make a Julian Newman video ASAP. Steph Curry with a 40-inch vertical Julian <laughs> Newman. No, the best one was the Jeremy Lin one. What happened to Jeremy oh, Lin? Yeah. That was his best ever video. Michael Zamba was a goat, bro. I swear to God, his videos were like so entertaining. But yeah, no, DeAndre Jordan can suck my ball. <laughs> oh, what's <laughs> <laughs> a homo i mean <laughs> no the bigger mistake was uh the nets getting rid of jared allen instead of deandre jordan that is probably one of the <laughs> worst mistakes i have ever seen it it sounded horrible at the time and it looks even worse now that jared allen has suddenly turned into the uh cleveland fashionista that he is and an all-star He's, yeah, oh, that was a horrible Bro, Julian, uh, Julian, you remember? Bro, Jarrett Allen dumping his balls on Miles Plumley's head was the funniest <laughs> game I've ever seen. He had 29 <laughs> points, 22 rebounds, and like four blocks or some shit. And it didn't He's even look thing. like he was trying a whole lot. Mason Plumley is either really bad or Jarrett Allen is really good. Bit of I both feel bad in. for Mason Plumley. He's supposed to be the, uh, the Hornets' center. And um, there's so much pressure on any horn at centre because obviously they need one so badly and he, oh, he just failed miserably. <laughs> that, so oh, when he was shooting free throws left-handed at the end of the year because he was shooting like 33%, I actually couldn't watch. It was unbelievable. It's so bad. they got to do something. <laughs> he, he, he's all right defensively and he's a good playmaker. But the thing is when you're so special offensively and not a good special <laughs> He's so special offensively. Your passing kind of gets cancelled out and then the defense is sort of just, it's okay. Don't get me wrong. Mason Plumlee is a good backup big. Like, I feel like Mason Plumlee is going to go be a backup big on a good team next year if they trade him. Um, But he should not be starting for the Hornets. No, no chance.